Retina Rounds, episode number 123, Intraoperative Fluorescine Angiography. Now, fluorescine angiography, as we know, can be a very helpful diagnostic tool for a variety of vascular diseases. For patients undergoing diabetic vitrectomy, preoperative wide-field fluorescine angiography can help to assess the location of fibrovascular proliferation, as well as central and peripheral perfusion status. This information can then be used to guide areas of membrane dissection and photocoagulation. But what can you do when media opacity, particularly vitreous hemorrhage, obscures our ability to obtain a high-quality pre-op FA? In today's episode, guest surgeon Dr. Joaquin Sosa Lockward shares with us a case demonstrating intraoperative fluorescein angiography. So let's see what this looks like, and at the end of the case, we'll go over some details for how you can incorporate this in your surgical cases. So this is a case of a 56-year-old diabetic male with long-standing vitreous hemorrhage and proliferative diabetic retinopathy. You can see here that Dr. Lockward is starting by performing a core vitrectomy to clear out the vitreous hemorrhage. And as that vitreous hemorrhage is cleared out, you can see that there are some areas of fibrovascular proliferation, particularly uh, around the optic nerve. Now he's clearing off some of the preretinal hemorrhage, and it looks like there is some striae in the macula. And so there may be a very fine membrane there, so he's gone ahead and stained uh, the macula with tissue blue dye, and using ILM forceps, he's peeling the ILM and stripping that uh, epiretinal membrane uh, from the macular surface. Once that's done, he's going to uh, divert his attention towards this fibrovascular membrane around the optic nerve, and you can see here that there's some uh, hyaloid that's still attached to the retinal surface nasally. He's going to elevate that up with the forceps and then use the cutter uh, to clean all of that posterior cortical vitreous off of the retinal surface. And some peripheral, uh, peripheral shaving is performed as well. Now he's switching to the intraoperative fluorescein angiography. And at the end of the case, we'll go over more specifics as to how this uh, fluorescein angiography is performed. But you can see that as the dye has been injected, it's starting to, there's some focal areas of leakage that can be identified. That's that green dye uh, that's leaking. And so he's going to go ahead and use the photocoagulation probe to uh, apply some, uh, some laser to these areas, potentially to decrease the risk for uh, post-operative hemorrhage. He's applying some additional laser to some areas that were uh, maybe uh, not as completely treated previously, and an air fluid exchange is performed at the very end of the case. So let's start our discussion by going over the basics of fluorescein angiography. Now, fluorescein absorbs blue light in the 465 to 490 nanometer spectrum and emits yellow-green light in the 520 to 530 nanometer spectrum. So when we're performing fluorescein angiography for optimal visualization, we want an exciter bandpass filter that will deliver blue light and a barrier bandpass filter that will preferentially allow us to see only the emitted yellow-green light. So how does this work intraoperatively? Well, for the exciter filter, Dr. Lockwood is using a 485 nanometer filter. Now his filter is mounted in the light module of the Constellation vitrectomy platform. But alternatively, this type of filter can also be mounted to a standalone external light source to which the light pipe can then be attached. For the barrier filter, one option would be to use an optical bandpass filter, which just allows uh, wavelengths from 520 to 530 nanometers. Now, one thing to uh, keep in mind here is that Dr. Lockwood and his colleagues have noted that the laser filter attached to the microscope, which blocks 532 nanometer wavelengths, can suppress the fluorescein uh, emissions. And so one option is to use a laser filter that can swivel out of position uh, to optimize visualization during the intraoperative fluorescein angiography. And of course, this needs to be swiveled back into position when uh, photocoagulation is being performed. Another option is to use a digital barrier filter, which is what Dr. Lockwood used in this case. With uh, digital heads-up viewing systems, you can suppress red and blue channels and enhance green channels uh, and modify other parameters like gain, hue, saturation, uh, and contrast to uh, enhance the fluorescein emission visualization. Now, this setup may seem a little complex, but for more information on installing the exciter filter and the digital barrier settings, this article by Michael Cardamone and colleagues published in Retina in 2023 can be a useful resource. So how can this imaging modality help improve surgical outcomes? Well, potential applications include identifying areas of capillary nonperfusion, which can then help the surgeon target areas of photocoagulation application. 
Now, visualization of fibrovascular proliferation and membranes can also be enhanced with intraoperative fluorescein angiography, and that may help to guide surgical dissection. And last, as this case demonstrated, uh, intraoperative FA can help to identify focal areas of leakage that can then be treated with either diathermy or laser photocoagulation. And Dr. Lockwood has informed me that he and his colleagues have an upcoming publication showing that use of intraoperative fluorescein angiography can uh, decrease the rate of early postoperative vitreous hemorrhage, and so we'll look forward to seeing that soon. And there may be other applications uh, of this technology for other uh, retinal vascular diseases as well. And given that this is a relatively new imaging modality, we'll see how this imaging technique can potentially enhance surgical outcomes. But overall, I think this is a very innovative approach, and I want to thank Dr. Lockwood for sharing this case with us. For more from Dr. Lockwood, be sure to check out his YouTube channel. There's a lot of great content there, and thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please visit us at retinarounds.com. There you can sign up for our email list. You'll get a notification every time a new video is posted. And if you have an interesting video or a tip or trick that you'd like to share, please follow the links on our website and you can upload your video there. Thanks so much for watching.